we did it. The community behind Crossplane, together with Upbound, removed the last obstacle that might be in your way towards adopting fully, completely, Crossplane for all your infrastructure and services and application needs. So, what did we do, you might ask? Well, we accomplished 100% resource coverage for all the major cloud vendors. That means AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. So, from now on, there is not a single service in any of those providers, with many more to come, that is not available through Crossplane. So, let me show you what we did, how we did it, and how you can use that something. My name is Victor and this is Upbound. We are a company behind your favorite DevOps tool, Crossplane. Before I proceed and before I explain what we did and what's that mysterious thing that brings us 100% resource coverage, let me give you a quick warning. I will not explain what is Crossplane. I will not show you how to use compositions and so on and so forth. Today, I will focus completely and exclusively on crossplane providers and to be more specific i will focus on terajet that's the project we created to give you complete coverage for all the resources that you might need now if you're confused and if you say hey i do not even understand what is crossplane and what are compositions and so on and so forth well the links to the videos are in the description and I will not explain what those things are. What I will do, however, is explain how Crossplane works with providers. Providers are extending what Crossplane can do. There is a provider or more than one provider for each type of service or for each cloud vendor and so on and so forth. And each of those providers give us a number of Kubernetes resources that we can use to manage some resources like EC2 instances in AWS, GKE in Google Cloud, uh, resource groups in Azure, and so on and so forth. So through providers, through resources in providers, we get Kubernetes custom resources that we use to manage certain services. Now here comes the important part. Until now, all the providers were cross-plane native. I'm not sure whether we have the term, but if we don't, then I just invented it. So we have cross-plane native providers that are designed specifically and written specifically to leverage APIs of the services that cross-plane is managing. They're written in Go and they give us the best possible experience we can have with crossplane. There are no moving parts, there is nothing between crossplane and the service that you are managing. They are consistent no matter which providers we are using and so on and so forth. There are many, I mean many, really many benefits of using crossplane native providers. However, there is a problem with those providers. I mean it's not a problem for users, they are absolutely amazing, but there is a problem for developers of those providers. It might take a lot of time to include all the resources in a provider. If you take a look at, let's say, AWS, there are hundreds, almost a thousand different resources, different services that we can manage in AWS. And developing the code, the provider code that is required for Crossplane to interact with AWS or any other provider can take a lot of time. So right now we have Crossplane native providers for AWS, Azure, Google, Kubernetes, Helm, Sivo, and so on and so forth. There are quite a few, but they do not provide right now 100% coverage. Today, we cannot use Crossplane native providers to manage absolutely all the services available everywhere. We will get to that point, but it will take time. So we created a new project called Terajet. Terajet uses Terraform to generate provider code. What was taking weeks or months or years in the past can now be done in a fraction of time. Through Terajet, we can leverage years of experience and years of effort put into Terraform and take those definitions and convert them into cross-plane providers. And that's how we got complete, full coverage for the three major providers and much more is coming. And as you will see later, I will talk about it. You should be able to create cross-plane providers as well. I mean, you were always able to create providers, but now you can do it in a very, very easy way. So Terajet is leveraging the investment put into Terraform 
to generate the resources in the providers that Crossplane needs. But that is only an implementation detail that matters only to those contributing to providers. From the perspective of Crossplane users, you know, people who just want to use Crossplane to manage their resources and services and so on and so forth, there is no difference. It does not really matter whether it's Terrajet or Crossplane native or something else. From the user perspective, the experience is the same and all the features that you could use in Crossplane with the existing providers will be available or actually are already available starting now through Terrajet providers. So think of Terrajet as a way to create resources in providers very, very fast. So just to be clear, let me show you very quickly what we have right now, at least from the API perspective. This, for example, is Google Cloud Provider generated through Terrajet. And as you can see here, there are 438 resources. Further on, we have uh, AWS with 763 resources and Azure with 647 resources. They're all available right now. So if you had Crossplane adoption on hold because it did not provide all the resources you needed, that obstacle is now gone. At least if you're using AWS, GCP and Azure. And as I said before, much more is coming. And even if you're not covering the provider that you are using, it's very easy to generate the provider yourself. That being said, let me show you how all that works. Let me generate some cloud services using one of the Terrajet providers. I will be using Azure, but the same logic, whatever I'm showing you right now, applies equally to AWS and Google Cloud. So let's go. This is a definition that will create a Kubernetes cluster. And in this case, I will be using cluster claims. I will be using compositions. As I said before, I will not explain what those are. You can check them out. There are videos, there are links to the videos in the description. So I'm not explaining those things. The only thing I want to do is show you how transparent Terrajet based providers are. And there is no tangible difference between them and the providers you might have used in the past. If you want to reproduce what I'm doing, then, well, the link to the gist is in the description as well. So if you want to repeat the steps I'm doing, you can. So let me apply that uh, definition, which is kubectl apply, and then file name is examples, azure, aks.yaml, and there we go. I will show you the definition soon, and then you will see that there is no real difference between Terrajet and not Terrajet providers or Crossplane native providers. But for now, I will go and fetch some coffee because it will take 10 to 15 minutes until all the resources in Azure are created. So coming back in 15 minutes. Don't worry, you do not need to wait for me to come back in 15 minutes. I will fast forward the video. I'm back. So let's take a look whether it worked. Kubectl get managed and let's say objects as well. And what shall we get? Now there is this warning. You are likely not going to see it even though I do. That's due to some throttling that Kubernetes and kubectl is doing. We made the fix and contributed to the Kubernetes community. So once you install or upgrade your cluster to a newer version and the list of all supported versions is in our docs, you will not see this message. So don't panic. This is temporary and we made the fix for that directly in Kubernetes. So the resources were created. I got my, what is this resource group? And I created the AKS cluster in this case. And I installed a couple of applications in that cluster. I installed Crossplane and Prometheus and created some uh, Kubernetes objects. That's all fine. I'm not going to explain it because again, the links to the videos are in the description. What matters is that I used Crossplane as I always did, even though the provider is different. The provider that I'm using is Terrajet, and I'm going to show you how it looks like. So here's one of my compositions, the one that I just used, and it's stored in packages, KTS, AKS. Here we are, right? So this is the composition that defines all the resources that I use. And there are a couple of important things that I want to show you here. To begin with, let's go to the top. Where is the top? Here we are, right? Uh, uh, there we are. So I'm using container service Azure 
jet cross plane, right? So whenever you see jet that comes from the TerraJet project, that's a provider or a resource in a provider created with TerraJet and generated from Terraform, even though this is not Terraform, this is Crossplane, but the provider TerraJet Azure provider was generated through it. But for you as a user, that really does not matter. You're just using a different API version if you want to use TerraJet, but the definitions are the same old Crossplane types of definitions. You can continue using patches and define your things. This is a composition. So again, not talking about compositions right now, and another important thing is that you do not have to choose one provider or the other. You can mix and match. You can use cross-plane native providers together with Terraget providers. Basically, you can combine any providers you want. And in here, I'm combining Terraget providers for Azure together with, uh, what is this, uh, Helm provider and Kubernetes provider. I could even sprinkle here some resources from uh, cross-plane native Azure provider if I would want to. It does not really matter. You can mix and match providers as much as you want or as much as you need. Now that you saw that Terraget is transparent from user perspective and that it gives us the coverage that we needed, uh, you know, now you're covered 100%, at least for those three providers more to come. What I want to say and what is important also to note, uh, let's go to the documentation. Here we are. Look at this here, generating a new provider using Terraget. And if you go to this guide link, you can see the guide, the description, how you can generate the provider yourself. So if you see that there is a provider or a resource or something missing in Terraget, you can use this guide to create the provider yourself and use it for your own purposes or even better, contributed to the project. And I highly encourage everybody to do that. So if you see that there is something missing, that there is something that Crossplane is not doing right now, but that something is already covered through Terraform, you can use this guide to convert Terraform modules into Crossplane providers, Terraget providers, and uh, get going. And then you can contribute it back to the project so that others can benefit. And the best thing is that the effort is minimal. There is almost nothing, I mean, there is something you need to do, but you will be done in no time. And you will be much faster than if you develop a brand new provider using cross-plane native uh, type of code and providers and so on and so forth. So if there is something missing, something that you need, you can use this guide to get the provider that you need or the resource in an existing provider and so on and so forth. It's fast, it's easy, please do it and then create a pull request so that others can benefit. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching and you go and check out Terraget, try it out and let me, let us know what you think.